Hi everyone, here's the Book Academy once again. Today I'm going to recommend three articles from the month of July, which I think you should check out. Only three, just a few, because I think they're very interesting and they also make for a very interesting discussion. Uh, and I'd like to hear uh, your opinion on a few questions I'll ask in the course of this video. I'd like to hear what you think in the comments below. First, The Millions has published one of their long articles detailing upcoming books from the next six months, from the second half of 20. 2018. Do give it a look because I'm sure you'll find one or two books you're going to note down and maybe you wish to pre-order online even. I'm especially interested in Patrick DeWitt's upcoming novel. Uh, Patrick DeWitt's uh, The Sisters Brothers was one of my favorite books from a few years ago. Uh, it was a novel I adored. I am a huge fan of the Western genre, as I'll talk about more uh, later into the video, and it was very much my type of book. It moved uh, pretty much in the confines of the Western genre until it didn't. There were some unexpected elements, some borderline mysterious ones. Uh, there was so much heart in that book and the plot kept surprising me time and again and most importantly it was so enjoyable. I still remember it very fondly and I'd like, I'd like to reread it someday but probably I'd like to read that upcoming novel first. I'm also very interested in Jonathan Lethem's new novel The Feral Detective. Uh, Lethem's mystery fiction is uh, generally um, amazing. Motherless Brooklyn, Gun with Occasional Music are among my very favorite novels. I can't wait. I'm also very curious because two very important reviewers slash editors are going to publish debut novels later this year or have recently published them. Uh, I'm talking about the New York Times um, former uh, head critic Michiko Kugatani and Lydia Kisling, the editor of the millions. And if, if uh, as uh, apparently is the case, if reading a lot is supposed to be a requisite to be a good writer, well, th these people should be pretty excellent writers, actually. I'm very interested in, the, interested in that idea of critics uh, writing novels. I'd like to see what type of novels they've written. I'm not 100% sure I'll be able to read these books, uh, not because I don't want to, even just for a simple matter of time, but I'm still very curious about these books and who knows, maybe I, I'll try and find the time to read them. The next piece I'd like to recommend is an article by the New York Times where they asked 13 world famous uh, writers uh, what the scariest book they've ever read is. And a couple of them, including Neil Gaiman and Carmen Maria Machado, answered The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, which is a novel I read a few years ago and I found it, it was amazing and I loved it because of its narrative structure and the way it was written and the psychological insight it offered, especially in, into the mind of the main character and the way it builds this mind and plays with it in a very cruel way. But I'm not sure I was so scared by that book, probably because I need my horror to be a little bit more moving and more physical. Mariana Enriquez, a pretty terrifying writer in her own right, uh, and a, a short story writer I would recommend to any horror fan, uh, has also pointed at Pet Cemetery as the scariest book she's ever read, and I've, I've heard that book mentioned several times as Stephen King's scariest novel, although in my experience it was very disturbing, it's defi it definitely deals with a very disturbing and moving topic, but the scariest Stephen King novel I've read personally probably is it, I would say. Some passages, especially those set uh, during the character's childhood, they were kind of fucking terrifying. That vampire with the razor blades in his mouth was, was kind of messed up. Also, there was a story from his collection Night Shift called The Boogeyman, which I read when I was in middle school and completely terrified me. I shouldn't have read that thing. It was so scary. I probably pointed that one as uh, the scariest bit it's a bit of fiction by Stephen King I've read so far. Uh, what about you? What, what was the scariest book you've ever read? The scariest reading experience you've ever had? In my experience, in my personal history, it probably was The Rats in the Walls by H.P. Lovecraft, which I can now see uh, it is probably Lovecraft's most... Uh, the story where Lovecraft pays the heaviest debt 
to MR James. I read it when I was 15 and it terrified me completely after other obvious stories, including Dagon and Pigman's models, had already done a pretty good job at scaring me. I still believe it's one of the most deeply moving pieces of horror fiction I've ever read. It starts from a pretty sinister premise, moves on to very disturbing events and concludes with a totally fucked up uh, ending. Uh, it scared me so much I had to uh, put away my HP Lovecraft and I only came, came back to it, I only got back to it when I was 18 uh, and it ignited my passion for reading when I finally got back to Lovecraft and read the whole of his fiction. A close second though for the title of the scariest book I've ever read would probably be this motherfucker, House of Leaves by Mark Danielewski. I'm definitely a sucker for that type of horror fiction that tries its best to make you believe it is actually real through metalepsis and through these types of uh, framing devices where it seems like this is a found manuscript of sorts and the curator details the nightmares the manuscript at the heart of the book gave him and tells you that you're going to have those same nightmares. It terrified me completely. A uh, Part of the reason why I had to read this book uh, jumping from section to section was both in order to understand it because this is a rather messed up book in its layout and it's uh, it's not supposed to be read in a linear fashion at all if you ask me but also because that helped me navigate the scariest bits um, and deal with them in a way that was most more comfortable to me let me know about the books that traumatized you though uh, finally the last article I'm going to recommend is a piece on the Los Angeles review of books by Greg Jackson called Reverse Cowboy, where he details the evolution of the Western genre in American culture and in the, especially in uh, uh, American pop culture and in the American collective perception of the genre. He talks in a very interesting way of how the Western genre and its tropes and its common characters are pretty detached from the historical truth of how the Western frontier was structured and it also deals with how the genre has evolved in recent decades and has become in many ways politicized, maybe not the genre itself, but its tropes definitely have. Give it a read. I'm a huge fan of Western fiction, especially Western movies. My favorite pieces of Western fiction would probably be uh, C'era una, una volta West by Sergio Leone, um, Man Who Shot Liberty Balance by John Ford, um, Dead Man Redemption, which counts, and maybe even The Sisters Brothers, and I know I'm not mentioning that one novel you are all obsessed with, but uh, I love that one too, yeah, why not, it's, it's great. If you have even just a passing interest in Western as a genre, do read that article, it's brilliant, enlightening, it's long and dense, but it's far from boring, uh, it actually flows pretty quick. Uh, and let me know what articles from the month of July interested you a lot, what stories got your attention in the comments below. And thanks as always for watching. In a second you'll find links on the screen to other of my videos, to my review of Mariana Enriquez's Things We Lost in the Fire, amazing horror novel, and maybe the links to a video I filmed on House of Leaves, another pretty disturbing book. And thanks for watching. Bye guys.